guys, welcome back to the Chem 111 lab video series. This week we're doing experiment 9, reactions and percent recovery of copper. And like every week, let's do a safety check. Don't forget your lab coat, your goggles, and this week gloves are required. You still need your closed-toed shoes and your baggy pants to have the proper protective equipment. The main goal of this experiment is to understand what it means to carry out a chemical synthesis, a multi-step sequence of chemical reactions that generates a final desired product. Our chemical synthesis consists of ionic metathesis and redox reactions involving copper. Importantly, the products of each reaction are taken on to subsequent reactions. Thus, careful lab technique is essential to obtain the greatest amount of desired final product. Your lab technique will be assessed when you determine the percent yield of your synthesis or in our case, the percent recovery. Our chemical synthesis is unique in that it begins and ends with copper. In all, you'll take an original sample of copper through five different reactions, and after each reaction, you'll have made a different copper compound. First, you'll make copper two nitrate in solution with nitric acid, then you'll form the beautifully blue copper two hydroxide precipitate. Next, you'll simply heat the solution and make copper two oxide, after separating out this black solid from the rest of the solution, you'll then subject it to sulfuric acid to form copper 2 sulfate. Finally, you'll reduce the copper 2 sulfate to copper metals using zinc. Begin your synthesis by weighing out a piece of copper coil to three decimals. The first reaction of our synthesis is to form a copper 2 nitrate by reacting your copper sample with nitric acid. Thus, Place your copper coil in a clean 250 milliliter beaker, then go to the hood and add 5 milliliters of concentrated nitric acid to your beaker by use of a repipetter. The repipetter has already been set up to dispense the amount you need. Just put your beaker beneath the spout, pull up on the top piece, and then push down, just like a little pump. Be sure to write down all observations of the reaction in your notebook, and eventually all of the copper metal should dissolve. In this reaction, the copper metal goes from an oxidation state of zero to plus two in forming copper two nitrate. Thus, it lost electrons and was therefore oxidized. After all of the copper dissolves, dilute your solution with 100 milliliters of DI water. The blue color indicates the desired formation of copper two nitrate. The next step in our synthesis is to take our newly formed copper two nitrate and convert it to copper two hydroxide via an ionic metathesis reaction. To do so, all you need to do is add 30 ml of 3 molar sodium hydroxide. At this time, you should see a nice royal blue precipitate form. This is the desired copper 2 hydroxide product. If instead of a deep royal blue opaque solution, you get a more translucent teal or baby blue color, don't panic. All you have to do is add more NaOH in 10 milliliter increments until you get the desired product. The third step of our synthesis is to convert our copper 2 hydroxide to copper 2 oxide. In this dehydration reaction, the starting material loses an equivalent of water from its structure, resulting in one equivalent of water as a waste product. To dehydrate your copper 2 hydroxide, all you need to do is heat it. Thus, first be sure to add a few boiling chips to your beaker and then bring your solution to a gentle boil. At the same time, begin to heat 200 milliliters of DI water for isolating your product. The boiling chips will ensure a calm and even boil and will prevent flash boiling, which is a dangerous result of when the entire beaker of water comes to a sudden violent boil. When all of your blue copper 2 hydroxide has turned into the black copper 2 oxide, it's time to decant your product and separate it from the byproducts and excess starting materials in solution. Using folded paper towels, move your flask to the bench top and allow it to cool until your product has settled and you can handle the flask comfortably. Now simply decant your solution. The use of a stirring rod to decant your solution will help keep your desired black copper 2 oxide in the flask. We now want to make sure all of these undesired compounds are separated from our product, so use the water you heated earlier to rinse your copper 2 oxide. Just add the hot water to your flask, stir, allow the black solid to settle, and decant. Repeat this rinsing once more to really make sure all you have in your flask is clean copper 2 oxide. The penultimate step of our synthesis is another ionic metathesis reaction to convert copper 2 oxide to copper 2 sulfate by addition of sulfuric acid. All you have to do is add 15 milliliters of 6 molar sulfuric acid from the repipetter in the hood to your copper 2 oxide black precipitate. The resulting blue solution indicates that you made the desired product. It should now be easy to pick out your boiling chips with tongs and just throw them in the trash. The final step of our synthesis is reduction of our, your copper 2 sulfate to copper metal by use of zinc. 
The copper changes oxidation state from plus 2 to 0 in this reaction. Thus, this re is a redox reaction. After weighing out about 1.5 grams of zinc turnings, add this to your copper 2 sulfate. You should see a copper solid forming, and you can tell the reaction is complete when your blue solution turns colorless and stops bubbling. If your reaction stops bubbling and your solution is still blue, don't panic, just add more zinc. If you still have bubbling, you need to ensure complete reduction of your copper by simply heating your reaction gently in a hood. And if you have some gray-black solids, this is unreacted zinc. Just add some more sulfuric acid and gently heat your flask in the hood. The reduction of your copper is fully complete when the solution is colorless, has no gray-black solids, and is no longer bubbling. Now that you have your final copper metal product, all that's left is to isolate and dry it to obtain your percent recovery. To obtain an accurate mass of your final copper metal, you need a completely dry evaporating dish. Thus you'll need to heat your dish for about 5 minutes to dry off any water. After allowing your dish to cool, you can then obtain its accurate mass. While you're waiting for your evaporating dish to cool, obtain 250 milliliter beaker, put a few boiling chips in it, and then begin heating about 100 milliliters of water for a steam bath to dry your copper. All right, you're finally ready to isolate and dry your final copper product. You'll do this by getting it all into your evaporating dish and then dry it over a steam bath. First, you can't off the solution from your copper into a waste beaker. Now transfer the copper to your evaporating dish using a rubber policeman. We want all the copper to end up in the dish, so feel free to use water to rinse out your beaker and help transfer all the solid and to rinse off your rubber policeman. Once you've transferred all of your copper into your evaporating dish, the last step is to thoroughly dry your product. Carefully decant off as much water as possible from your dish. You want to make sure all of the undesired products are removed from your final product. So rinse your copper once with water and then rinse it with methanol. This last rinse will help quickly and completely dry your final product. Be sure to decant off these water and methanol rinses into separate waste beakers. Finish removing all the water and methanol from your final product by heating your dish on a steam bath. Just place it on top of the water in the beaker you started heating a while ago as your evaporating dish is cooling. The water should be boiling by now and with your dish on top, the steam will gently heat and dry the copper product. Once your final copper product is completely dry, just take your dish off the steam bath, allow it to cool, wipe off all the water on the bottom, and then obtain its mass. Since you obtained an initial weight of your dish and the final weight with your copper metal product, you can obtain the mass of copper that you recovered after the chemical synthesis. Hopefully you recovered nearly all of your original copper sample, since that would mean your lab technique was excellent. Have fun! Woo!